everyone, I'm back again with another study session today, and today we are speaking about chest tubes. So let's get right into it. So a chest tube, what it does, it removes air or excess fluid from in the pleural space. And how it does this, it does this, it creates a vacuum that removes air or fluid. And there are quite a number of reasons why your client might have a chest tube. It could be because of pneumothorax, which is air in the pleural space, hemothorax, blood in the pleural space. Now, chest tubes are based on the three bottle system. So the chest tubes, drainage units that you will see will have three chambers. They're gonna have a collection chamber, a water seal chamber, and a suction control chamber. And what your nursing school exam or your NPLEX exam is gonna do, they're gonna test you on these chambers to see whether or not you know like what should be happening in these chambers. So I'm gonna go over that with you today in this study session. So first let's start with our safety equipment that should be at the bedside. We should have an occlusive dressing and tape and we should have a bottle of sterile water. Now, the collection chamber does what the name says, it collects drainage. And that drainage should be serosanguinous. And we need to assess this chamber throughout our shift at least every four hours. Now, there are some changes that we're looking for in this chamber. If the drainage becomes bright red, or at any time the drainage is more than 100 milliliters per hour, that can indicate that your client is hemorrhaging. Your client may possibly, your client may be bleeding, actually, they're bleeding, okay? And you need to notify the healthcare provider. The water seal chamber has water and it creates a one-way valve that and what this valve creates a one-way valve that lets air out but nothing in. And what you should see in this chamber is gentle tidling with each respiration. So let me explain to you what I mean by this. So as you know, the chest tube reestablishes the negative pressure environment in which we breathe. So with inspiration, when your client is breathing in, the water will rise. And when they're breathing out, the water will fall. Now, let's say your client is on a ventilator. That then becomes positive pressure. So what you would see is the reverse. When the client breathes in, the water will fall, and when they breathe out, the water will rise. So that's just to give you an idea of the, of the movements that you'll be seeing. Um, then there, no one is really gonna test you on that, but I just wanna give you an idea of the, the fluctuations that you would see with each respiration. Now, continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber is not good. It, it means there is an air leak somewhere in the system. And the air leak can be for a few reasons. It can be because of dislodgement. It can be because of obstruction. It can be because of a pneumothorax. And it can be because of equipment failure. So you're gonna have to try to troubleshoot when there is an air leak like exactly what's going on. And if for reason you cannot determine where the air leak is or you cannot correct it, you need to notify the healthcare provider. Now, speaking about titling, let's say you don't observe any titling or fluctuations in the water seal chamber. What do you think could possibly have happened? Right, if you don't see any titling, it, could, it, it stops, the tidal end actually stops when the client lungs has been fully re-expanded. So it's quite possible that the lung had re-expanded if you don't see any tidal end. But again, you kind of have to troubleshoot that. But typically when the tidal end stops, it means the lungs has fully re-expanded. The suction control chamber 
apply suction and it also has water. So in this chamber, bubbling is good. It means the suction is working. Yeah, so remember, in the water seal chamber, chamber, bubbling, not good. In the suction control chamber, bubbling, good. All right, so don't get like, don't get confused on that. Um, don't make sure you study it so that way, you know, when it's presented on your exam, you know, you get the correct answers. Now, some safety features for the chest tube. It should be below the level of the chest to, fill it, to facilitate drainage. You need to encourage the client to cough and deep breathe. You should reposition the client at least every two hours. You should never, ever, ever milk the chest tube. You should not milk the chest tube. You should not strip the chest tube, trying to get like the liquid out of the tube and into the drainage system. You should not do that. And you should not clamp the chest tube. All right, you should not clamp the chest tube. Now, what happens if the client pulls out the chest tube? Well, what you're gonna do, you're gonna immediately cover it with a gloved hand. Then you're going to apply an occlusive dressing and typically with an occlusive dressing, it doesn't let air re-enter the site. So with the occlusive dressing, you're gonna put it over the site and you're gonna tape it on three sides. We tape the occlusive dressing on three sides. And the reason why we do this, it's because if we tape all four sides, we're actually gonna create a tension pneumothorax in our client. So you tape the occlusive dressing on three sides. Now, the tube, the client pulled the tube um, out. Are you gonna reinsert it? No. No, you should not reinsert it. And this should be like a rule that you have for yourself as a nurse. If you did not insert it, do not reinsert it, okay? So you didn't put it in the first time and it came out, you're not gonna put it back in, all right? So that's what you're gonna do if the client pulled the chest tube out. Now, what happened if the chest tube become disconnected? Well, that's where the sterile water at the bedside comes in. You're gonna take the tube in and you're gonna put it into one or two inches. You're gonna put the tube in into the bottle of the sterile water and that's gonna recreate the water seal, okay? So there is some education that you have to do for your client before the chest tube is removed. And the education involves the Valsalva's maneuver. And you're gonna have to discuss this and teach your client this maneuver because they're gonna have to perform this maneuver when the tube is removed. And the reason why the Valsalva's maneuver is performed when the chest tube is removed is because it prevents air from going back into the pool space. So that's the education you're gonna to have to do with your client. Now, let's review when do we call the healthcare provider or notify the healthcare provider. Increased drainage, which means drainage more than 100 mLs per hour from the collection chamber. A change in the color of the drainage. If you cannot identify or correct the air leak, there is a change of mental status in the client, meaning that your client is actually getting worse. There is a change in the breathing pattern of the client, meaning the breathing pattern is getting worse and your client exhibits signs and symptoms of shock. So guys, that's all the notes that I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed um, having this study session with me. If you learned something today from this video, I hope that you do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that way you would not miss another video from me. Again, thanks for studying with me. Bye-bye.